Hello, I'm Robert Bowden, a member of CLSI's Breakpoint Implementation and Outreach Working Groups. I'll be going over Part A of the BIT Toolkit. Part A, the Breakpoints in Use form, is provided to help laboratories meet the CAP requirement that laboratories should document all the breakpoints in use in their laboratory. On the first sheet of Part A is an instructions page with a suggested procedure for how to complete the form. As you work through this, you'll note that it does require collaboration with members of your facility outside of the microbiology laboratory. Step one, arrange a meeting with an appropriate IT staff member to confirm where breakpoints are currently stored and applied at your institution. The reason for this is that breakpoints are often stored in multiple locations, such as the LIS, electronic health record, SOPs, and commercial AST device software. If using a commercial AST system, you may contact the technical representative for instructions on how to obtain a list of breakpoints applied on the system, or you may be able to find these yourself by referencing the instrument software user manual. Step three, for drugs currently tested within your lab, compare the breakpoints being used in your lab to those in the current edition of CLSI M100. And for your ease of reference, there's a spreadsheet in part B of this toolkit that lists all the breakpoints that are currently in M100. Flag the breakpoints being used in your laboratory that differ from current CLSI breakpoints. Step four, cross-check breakpoints that you flagged in step three against the FDA stick breakpoints to see if CLSI breakpoints and FDA breakpoints are the same. Part B of this toolkit lists CLSI and FDA breakpoints side by side for easy comparison. However, it should be noted that the FDA stick may be updated multiple times throughout the year. And so it's really important that you should check the FDA stick website and particularly the notice of updates page for any updates that may have occurred after this toolkit was published. If CLSI and FDA breakpoints are the same, but are different from those being used in your laboratory, you'll need to develop a plan to implement updated breakpoints. This might involve meeting with your antimicrobial stewardship program to prioritize which breakpoints should be updated first. If CLSI breakpoints and FDA breakpoints are not the same, you should meet with your stewardship program to discuss which set of breakpoints are most appropriate for use in your facility. Step five, you should develop a validation plan, including timeline, to update any breakpoints in use that do not coincide with CLSI M100 current version or the FDA stick breakpoints. Next on the instructions sheet are tips and notes about how to fill in the form. So I'll briefly go to the blank template form. This is what you'll use to fill out the sheet. This is the sheet that you will fill out. And these are the columns with different categories and data fields that you'll fill in. So on the instructions page, we won't go through all of these right now, but you certainly should carefully read through all of these before attempting to fill out the form on your own. Lastly, there are common abbreviations provided. To assist you in filling out the form, we've con compiled a demo data sheet, which is already filled out with several examples. In the first example, we'll see cefepime enterobacterialis breakpoints as tested on a laboratory's commercial automated device. We see that the test system reportable dilutions is listed here, and this is something that's important for, for you to compile in order to determine whether updated breakpoints are able to be applied onto a commercial device. Sometimes the full range of concentrations that may be on a panel are not always able to be uh, reported for all organism groups. So that's why you need to know what the reportable dilutions are for a given reporting or a given organism group. And your technical representative should be able to assist you in finding this information if it's not listed in a product insert. It should be noted that both CLSI and FDA describe the resistance breakpoint as a greater than or equal to a value, in this case, 16. But commercial devices sometimes report the highest value 
as greater than a certain number. Location of breakpoints is listed as being in the laboratory information system. The breakpoint does match M100 as of last review by the lab. The breakpoint does not match FDA stick breakpoints as of last review. However, CAP doesn't require that it matches both, only that one must be met in order to be in compliance. We see that the breakpoints were implemented prior to 2021. In 2021, CAP began requiring that laboratories document when breakpoints were implemented in the laboratory. So if it was prior to 2021 and you don't have an exact date, it is acceptable to simply write pre-2021. The date of the most recent lab review is listed. And then there's a column for comments and an action plan. So in this case, it's noted that the instrument follows the FDA stick. Categorizing isolates with MICs of four to eight is intermediate. But as the laboratory has chosen to follow CLSI breakpoints, their laboratory information system converts these values from being reported as intermediate to instead report them as susceptible dose dependent. In the case of ceftazidine, we see that the breakpoints are less than or equal to 8, 16, and greater than or equal to 32, and that these do not match current CLSI breakpoints, and they do not match current FDA breakpoints. So in the comments column, it's acknowledged that this is an obsolete breakpoint and must be updated and that there is a validation plan. However, it's also noted that the antimicrobial is not routinely reported and that the lab tests by disk diffusion currently if it's requested. And we see on the next line that the ceftazidine breakpoints by disk diffusion, which do not have a reportable dilution range as it's a disk, that these breakpoints do match with CLSI and also match with FDA. We'll do a couple more examples. For ciprofloxacin, enterobacteriales breakpoints from the commercial automated device, the reportable dilutions are less than or equal to 0.25 to greater than 2. The laboratory is using the current CLSI and FDA breakpoints of less than or equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 1. And it's noted that these are in use for Enterobacteriales except Salmonella, and that the panel concentrations are not low enough for testing Salmonella. Two lines below this, we see that it's been filled out ciprofloxacin breakpoints for Salmonella species, that a gradient strip is the methodology used by the laboratory, that the dilutions that are reportable are less than or equal to 0.002, up to greater than 32 micrograms per mil, and that the breakpoints being used are the current CLSI and FDA breakpoints of less than or equal to 0 0.06 for susceptible, 0.12 to 0.5 for intermediate, greater than or equal to 1 for resistant. So the commercial automated device that's used for other enterobacteriales tests only down to 0 0.25 and therefore cannot be used to report out salmonella which is why gradient strip is used by the laboratory instead. The laboratory has implemented the ciprofloxacin direct blood culture cutoffs for Pseudomonas, both the eight to 10 hour read cutoffs and also the 16 to 18 hour read cutoffs. So these should also be listed in the form if you're using uh, the direct blood culture cutoffs in M100. And lastly, for daptomycin, we see that the lab tests Enterococcus species both by a commercial automated device or alternatively by a gradient strip. The reportable dilutions are listed. The breakpoints are listed. The location of the breakpoints is listed. They do not align with CLSI breakpoints. They do not align with current FDA breakpoints. And so over in the comments, we see it's acknowledged that it's an obsolete breakpoint, which must be updated, that there is a validation plan. And then further uh, comments are provided saying that the instrument came with former FDA breakpoint of less than or equal to four for Enterococcus faecalis. In 2016, the laboratory did a validation to expand reporting to all Enterococcus species using the former CLSI breakpoint of less than or equal to four, but that they now must do another validation to implement the current separate CLSI breakpoints for Enterococcus faecalis, for Enterococcus faecium, and for other Enterococcus species.
It's recognized that this is a lengthy process, an involved process to complete this form. But our hope is that this toolkit, both parts A and the parts that follow, will help you to do this to meet the CAP requirement. And that after you have completed it for the first time, it will require only minor revisions and a minor amount of time for review each subsequent year. Thank you very much.